What I thought I would do, though, is just very quickly uh, talk about what we're trying to cope with, and it's just this fusion of offline and online. So we, as you know, um, now can go into a Whole Foods in the United States, and the trolley will actually tell you where to go. And in that little iPad and that um, cart there, it will know that I need a gluten-free diet. So if something's added with gluten, it will tell me to take it out, um, which is quite cool. Um, and then I'm going to get into a bit of what we're doing with indoor maps, uh, virtual stores, as you can see there, from Tesco at Gatwick, arrived two weeks back from a visa, and you have milk um, in your refrigerator, which is quite nice, um, and, and pop-up stores in the last one. Well, again, I think you all are aware of this. The, you know, we get over 4 billion searches a day uh, when people are seeking out information. If it's to go on a cruise or uh, to buy a car, it's not just searching, but they're looking at many different sources to inform their decision. And uh, if you look at a, a big um, retailer like Carrefour, actually, when they took the time just to get a sense of what is the correlation between people coming to the site, just visits to the site on offline PC sales, and they saw actually that 10% of their offline sales were influenced by what people were doing online. I think you all know too, when people are researching bigger ticket items, they spend more. Well, this notion of shopping in multiple channels we see from a variety of businesses across the industry, uh, but in retail in particular, if you spend, um, you know, I don't know, like uh, 1,500 uh, pounds in a year, uh, online only, but if you also start shopping in uh, stores, that will quadruple with many businesses, or at the very least, double. And if they shop with you then also on a mobile device, oftentimes that can get six or eight times. Um, so this multi-channel shopper is much more valuable and therefore much more loyal. Um, and you know, this is just another example. It's business Kurtz in Germany. I uh, had to close down some stores, found it quite difficult, but when they looked at uh, you know, using a coupon to drive this multi-channel behavior, they realized that the multi-channel shopper was twice as valuable. And they also started just to experiment with some kind of clever things, like you're waiting for the train, and what do you do? Well, you start to try on your shoes, right? Uh, like a 3D shoe, you can share it with your friends on Facebook, you can buy it instantly for home delivery. It's quite nice, isn't it? So, um, you know, what we try to focus on is what are these moments that matter in terms of loyalty? So if, if we were able to go to this screen, we'll try to see if it works. Um, you can just go to the, um, the Wolf Vision. Thanks. So this is just you know my home screen here. Um, I just hold over this, and this is something called Google Now. So what we try to do is make people want to use Google you know, twice a day, like a toothbrush. So we think about utility of life. How do you make people's lives better? So this is something on our latest uh, software delegate uh, called Google Now. So this is my home screen. It automatically realizes I'm in London. Uh, I was in Rome recently, and I saw a picture of the Coliseum. I had a translation <coughs> service between Italian and English. I could see what the euro was doing versus the pound. Because it knows me, uh, it can bring some pretty interesting uh, information. It knows uh, that I'm going to be going home later. It can tell me there's a traffic jam here to avoid that or if I want to take the bus, uh, it will give me some options on the bus. Uh, it knows I support Chelsea, because I'm always supporting that football club looking and seeking information, so it tells me instantly that's who they're playing. Um, it knows what socks I'm looking at closely. So again, this is not preloaded, this is just stuff that the computer's trying to proactively tell me to make my life better. Yes, it's not just reacting to a search, like I'm in Berlin giving 10 restaurants. It knows I'm in Berlin, and it's gonna personalize four maybe restaurant recommendations that I actually care about but I actually want to go to. So, um, you know, this is just telling me obviously what the weather is, but I thought this was quite cool. I had to go to Manchester last week, and I was just about to go out the door. It was actually sunny in London, and I looked down at my phone and it said, it's raining right now in Manchester. So I went back and I got my raincoat. Uh, so that was quite uh, magical, I thought. So that gives you a sense of kind of how we think about loyalty. Um, I thought I would give you one uh, quick example, though, um, of, of what I had to do recently. And it was a real moment uh, that mattered to me because I was playing tennis. Uh, I got to the semifinals of our local club tournament on grass. But I was sliding all over the grass in the quarterfinals. So I needed grass tennis shoes. And what did I do? I, I went in here and I started shopping. Tennis shoes. 
So we'll see if the wireless works. Uh, didn't have even a chance to try this uh, before, so it might be difficult. <laughs> Tennis shoes. It might not be behaving. It's not. No, it is. But it's not. <laughs> sorry. So I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, so I, what, I, what I think I'll have to show you is just a, a typed in search. So if, if the wireless is fast and working, what you see quickly is like in the US, one out of four of our searches are voice. So we're just trying to make it simple again. How do you engender loyalty? Make it simple. I'm not doing a great job showing that right now. But what I, what I wanted to do in that instance is just quickly find out where is the store near me, uh, where we live, so I could go get the shoes. Unfortunately, uh, I went to a lot of sites like this that didn't have a mobile enabled site, so it made it very difficult, you know, doing all this scrolling, and it just got to the point where it was very frustrating. And so, what did I end up doing? Well, I, I did a few other searches, and I ended up going to Amazon. And uh, I knew, because they promised that by the next day, those shoes would arrive at 7, that I would have them. My match was starting at 6.30, so I thanked my wife to bring them to the court, which she did. Um, tried them on, I started to actually play quite a bit better, um, just lost the first set, and then I got creamed the last set. So I don't know what the moral of the story is. It was a moment that really mattered. But I'm going to get back to this with Amazon and loyalty and how they think long term. So um, if we could flip back to the slides, that would be great. Um, but what I thought I'd show you is just a video that our team made uh, to, try to, get, to try to get a feel for a modern day um, moment that really matters. So if we can play this video. Can you hear that OK? Show a couple examples from this. So 
He obviously wanted to go with the name Elvis. Um, she wasn't too impressed. Uh, so uh, this was just giving an understanding of, you know, you type in or you say baby uh, name finder, and there's all these options. Actually, Pampers had a really nice sort of baby finder, um, but actually it was almost impossible to access because, again, no mobile sites. So that's a moment missed. Um, so went back, and actually Huggies has a really nice website uh, in terms of, you know, you can see here, click on baby name finder. You can see top names for girls. She goes with a more traditional name. But she could also find out information about boys. She actually looked at the origin of Elvis, and it means, like, wise and noble. So in that instance, she could suppress that information. So um, her husband didn't have uh, further uh, arguments. But this is just like, you know, want to move into a bigger house. That is a serious moment that matters, right? When someone's making the biggest or most expensive uh, purchase uh, decision. She's showing major intent with a state agent. So some businesses, again, if it's on the tablet, in this instance, it's just easy to navigate. Um, and it's easy to very quickly, and that's why we spend so much time on maps. Uh, you know, you can suddenly see, all right, this is an area that I might be interested in. What does that street look like? So that's why we've done Street View. And this is something we're focused on doing now indoors, as much as we've done outdoors. Um, and so what I thought I'd do before I shift into the three things that I think are quite important to think about on loyalty is if we could just go back for one second um, to the Wolf Vision. Thank you. And so all I'm doing here is I'm just showing you a quick example. I was in San Francisco about 12 days ago, and I got to the airport. It was really nice because um, they have indoor maps. Uh, it's something that we've developed. And it immediately knew which floor I was on because I had the phone, right? So it would recognize you're on floor two. I need to show you this map. Um, I could very quickly see where I needed to go uh, to get to the gate. I was actually running late. Um, I wanted to get my two boys gifts, though. So by using this, I was able to figure out where a toy store was. I got in, I got two Lego watches from my boys, and I made my flight back to London. So, um, you know, if you go down Oxford Street, and if you want to just try it yourself, you'll see in, indoor maps for John Lewis, indoor maps for House of Fraser. But I think what you'll see in the near future are images, and that's going to be a way to get people into shops. And um, so if we can go back to the slides really quickly. Um, there are three things I wanted to really quickly um, emphasize, and I know we're uh, running late on time, so I'm going to have to go a little bit quickly. Now, half of the top retailers in this country don't do click and collect, and I think they don't realize probably just how much loyalty they can drive through this. It can add 25% on top of what you do online. However, many stop because of the cost. You can see here in the little red, 2 to 4% distribution cost to put something on a store shelf. However, it costs you know, between 10 and 15% to do pick up in store or for home delivery. So you start to think, oh my goodness, here, you know, to run a store, you have 90% that's fixed versus 40% for a pure online player. And I think that's, that's really interesting, but you can see why people would not do something like click and collect. However, I think it's really interesting when you look at this store that House of Fraser runs, both in Aberdeen and Liverpool, 75% is pick up in store. Um, and it's very small, it's probably not bigger than uh, this stage space here. You can try on stuff if you want, but really it's about picking up things and then getting a bit of uh, store staff assisted uh, advice. And this drove profitability, excuse me, uh, very quickly. Uh, this is another um, example where, if I can show you this, um, you know, you're at ASOS and you can suddenly not just have it arrive when you're not going to be there, but you can say, I'd rather pick it up here because that's right next to the tube and it's just a little convenience store. So making it trivially easy um, on delivery, I think is going to be uh, one of the most important differentiators around loyalty. Now, I'm going to get to Amazon in a second, but I think many of you know uh, they're building many fulfillment centers allowing for same-day delivery. So imagine, in this country, within a year or so, you get most of the products uh, on the same day. So, um, again, this is just something that I think is going to be a great driver of loyalty into the future. Now, uh, mobile, we talked a lot about it, and Graham made some great uh, points about how mobile can drive uh, loyalty. Um, this is interesting, I think, if it will play, uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's really quite cheesy, actually, so I'll turn off the sound. But what, what's happening is this is sort of like a socialite, um, you know, and she's panicking because it's the evening and she doesn't have the quite dress for the occasion. 
And so with her app, she can alert you know, her uh, style angel, as she calls him, and even Marcus. And he can start then preparing you know, a few dresses, a few things for her. So once she arrives, um, that will be waiting. And also make advice based on other things that she's bought from them in the past. You know, if it was a belt, so she can start um, accessorizing, um, you know, based on her own personalized, um, you know, views and, and previous purchases. So this goes on, but I thought it was something that you might want to look at in more depth, because I think you'll see more and more of this use of apps to promote uh, loyalty. Um, I use, for example, Kato's app on grocery, because it makes it so easy. I can do a 120 pound purchase in three minutes. It has all my credit card information. It has all my per past purchase. It personalizes some recommendations. Um, so, so that's the end of that. Now, this is another one that I thought was interesting too. Um, Fortunate to be uh, the CEO of this company, Albert Heim, uh, in the Netherlands, and they created this app. But actually, uh, it's amazing. Like half of Android users downloaded, half of iPhone users downloaded, and then half of those people that downloaded started using it regularly. So it will automatically tell me that this happy store is nearby. Uh, I can go in and it will have the internal map. So if I preloaded a shopping list, it will tell me how to navigate through. If I was shopping with my wife um, and we had one list and we were in different parts of the store, as we were crossing it off, it would happen in real time. So a lot of really clever ways, right, to get someone to come to your shop versus uh, your nearest competitors. Um, so uh, I think I'm doing okay on time. I've got a few more minutes here. So the last one, and it's obvious, I know you probably think I'm silly for even putting it up here, but if you don't take the long-term view, it really is difficult to drive programs that uh, will bring you loyal customers because you focus so much on that quarterly profit. So this is work that BCG did that I think is really interesting. You know, you look at selection for um, Amazon and they usually have, you know, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the amount of selection. Often, too, on price, uh, they can be 15, 20% cheaper, but also they can be a little more expensive when the market will bear it. And you realize that you know, the most sophisticated businesses use software and algorithms to make real-time pricing decisions. So you've got a huge range, you've got incredibly uh, powerful uh, pricing. Well, you know, you also have this major discount because if you look at in the US, like Target is a major retailer there. Look at the discounts that Target gets versus Amazon, right? It's all, Amazon's almost getting double the discount because of the scale it operates on from a distribution standpoint. And then you look at something like Prime, right? And this is interesting. Um, you look at how much uh, a household is spending with you before Prime, and then you look at how much they're spending with you after Prime. And in this research, it was 250 uh, gross margin up uh, improvement after families went on. So again, if you looked at that on a short-term basis, you'd say time is going to destroy Amazon. Free shipping next day on a lot of the products they sell, that's insanity. And yet it's just so easy, isn't it? Once you get into the habit, like being with the grass, tennis shoes, prime, next day, free shipping, <coughs> you just get in the habit. It's like I do with music or uh, there's other services that just make it uh, make it easy. So um, this was an instance too, I think, of a business that's thinking deeply about loyalty and long term. This is the flagship store for Burberry. I don't know if you can get the uh, sound. I'm going to wrap it up right now. Um, you all see this? You all walk through the store? customers in and they all had iPads that came out of these beautiful briefcases and they were order, able to order live off um, the runway. But they are targeting, right, teenage women who can't afford a trench coat right now, but they will be able to when they're 30. And that's taking a long-term view. So those are the three things. Thank you all for your time. Cheers.